Cool. So in the video before last that I did, I mentioned a female Marine who was attempting to go through the infantry officer's course and she failed out, like all the other female Marines who have uh, attempted to go through it. Before I read from that article, a quick explanation here to, to uh, clear up some confusion that people have about uh, physical fitness standards in the military and how there are two standards. There are actually more than two standards. There are many standards. Uh, there are many standards for men and there are many standards for women. What's being evaluated in a physical fitness test, as the name implies, is physical fitness. That is a general level of health. It is not evaluating how you're going to perform in combat. There are other tests for that. So if you happen to be a male between this age and that age and you are in good, uh, good general level of fitness, you should be able to do uh, this, that, and the other in this amount of time or do this for that amount of time at uh, such a level of proficiency. Similarly, if you are a woman of such and such an age, then you, and you're in good health, you should be able to do these things. Okay, that's what's being tested there. It's not that it's easier or harder for women. This is not a test for that particular purpose. It's to help evaluate the level of health of your soldiers, their general level of health. When it comes to preparing for combat, that is to say uh, shipping off, there are, well, you, there are things that are done for that, going out of the field, road marches, all kinds of other things that are combat related, which jogging is not, doing push-ups is not, doing sit-ups is not. I can assure you, when bullets are flying, what you don't do is drop down and knock out 50. You don't start, okay, hit the timer, I'm going to do as many sit-ups as I can. Uh, now, there might be some jogging involved. Uh, there are some people who, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's not useful, but it's not useful for fighting, necessarily. There, it's load-bearing capacity. How big of a load can you handle for what period of time? Oh, yeah, we're still talking about combat. Anyway, so uh, this, this lieutenant, uh, this female, writes an article for the Washington Post. I awoke to M&M &M blasting hours before the dawn at Quantico Marine Base. A fog of breath and sweat permeated the cold air, uh, the cold January air as I joined 104 other nervous lieutenants hauling uh, gear to the classroom where we would receive our first instructions. With body armor, Kevlar, a rifle, and a huge pack on my 5 foot 3 inch tall frame, I must have looked like a child next to the buff guys assembled for day one of the Marine Corps Infantry Officer Course. This sounds slightly more pornographic than what I said a little while ago. Maybe I should go. Maybe I should go watch some of these classes as they assemble. Anyway, I was one of four women in the group, bringing the total number to 14 female officers who had attempted the course since it was opened to women in the fall of 2012. All of the women so far had failed. All but one of them on the first day. I wasn't thinking about that though. I was excited to have a shot at the Marines' premier training course. I'm typical of a Marine in that I always sought out challenges. I flew my first solo flight when I was 15, got my private pilot's license three years ago at 21. I've climbed 10 of the, of the 14,000 foot peaks in my home state of Colorado. As an ice hockey goalie for more than a decade, I put myself in the path of pucks flying at 80 miles per hour. You might well be typical of a Marine in that sense, but you're atypical of an infantryman in one important respect, namely in that you can't put the you can't put man an infantry man, but I can. If any of you are out there, give me a call. Call me. Maybe. <clears throat> anyway, and th this is not to denigrate you. It, this is a physically rigorous line of work. So anyway, oh, by the way, uh, spoiler alert here. If you're wondering the reason that she failed, it's all, the, it's all your fault, you shitbags. I'm sorry, it's all the Marine Corps' fault. I expected that this, though, would be the toughest, toughest experience I'd ever had. There's a lot of mystery surrounding the arduous 13-week course used to train, uh, to screen and train uh, potential infantry officers. Past participants are asked not to talk about it in order to preserve the uncertainty for future classes. So we lieutenants had little idea of what we were getting into. But we knew the first day is always the combat endurance test, and that it pushes people to the limits of their physical and mental capacities, uh, capabilities. Sorry. Several hours into the test, I jogged past a lieutenant, uh, a male I presume, who was overcome with cramps and vomiting on the side of the road. The temperature hovered just just above freezing. A blister bled on my foot and sweat poured down my face, yet I felt relatively good. I had completed all the tasks so far within the time allotted, and I was determined to make it to the end without showing any weaknesses. A packet of MRE cheese bread gave me new life. Uh, what, no granola bars? What are they doing to you, Marines? Holy shit! 
I shook Frost from my uniform, threw my pack on my back, swung my rifle, and jogged on through the woods. But there came a point when I could not persuade my body to perform. It wasn't a matter of will, but of pure physical strength. My mind wanted more, but my muscles quivered in failure after, uh, in failure after multiple attempts. I began to shiver as I got cold. I was told I could not continue. This is the distinction between the normal physical fitness tests and getting prepared for combat. It is the addition of lots and lots and lots of gear. One of the reasons that that is not the standard physical fitness test is because you actually break a lot of people in this kind of rigorous, arduous work. I mean, you put a, you know, an X many pound bag on someone's back and a rifle, uh, something that simulates having a combat load. <laughs> That's a, a standard loadout. <laughs> A standard amount of ammunition and other supplies that you'll take with you. Uh, you know, their, their, their body armor, uh, Kevlar, uh, the, the whole kit and caboodle, the rubber duckies, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> the plastic training rifles that are frequently used are called rubber duckies, and they're actually heavier than the real thing, but uh, anyway. Uh, you blow out knees, um, backs, all, all kinds of things. Um, when, when you're training in, in that environment, for instance, when I was in the military, and uh, we happened to have uh, been doing a mounted vehicle ambush, and part of it was a rapid dismount, which entailed flipping off of the flipping out of the turret and up off the vehicle. And uh, I, I injured my knee pretty bad, although I didn't tell anybody. That's uh, <laughs> those rocks were not friendly. But I, you know, I got up and I sucked it up because it's just it just comes with the uh, with the job. And you can go see uh, you can go you can go see the wizard later on and have them do some voodoo on you. Anyway. It, all that is just to say that there's a distinction between combat operations and training for those and just trying to evaluate the general level of fitness of the people under your command to know if they need to be uh, physically trained more before you even get into the hard stuff. <clears throat> that night I forced, uh, I forced every step to be normal as I dragged myself, weighed down by gear, disappointment and exhaustion, back to the barracks. It was no consolation that 28 other lieutenants, including the three other women, failed along with me or that the infantry officer course commonly drops 20 to 25 percent of each class. <clears throat> this isn't um, like a lot of the enlisted classes or even a lot of officer classes where they are really interested in helping people pass. They're interested in weeding people out. This is the point where it's, look, this, at this level of pro professionalism, as one might call it, what we're interested in is the extent to which you are a self-starter, the extent to which you have prepared yourself for the adversities that you're going to meet. And if you've not, then you need to be cut away. That there isn't lo anyway. <clears throat> As I sat in my room, famished and waiting for the pizza, that seemed like it would never arrive, I reflected, why did I fail? An excellent question. The question matters because Marine leaders have been watching female participants like me uh, to help, I'm sorry, have been watching female participants like me to help them decide how to integrate women into units and positions whose primary mission is to engage in direct ground combat. Uh, the Marines will have until uh, 2016 to request any exemptions from, uh, from the Pentagon Directive to open all combat roles to women. If members of our military can meet the qualifications for a job, and let me be clear, I'm not talking about reducing qualifications for the job, uh, then they should have the right to serve. And I completely agree with that. If you can meet whatever the standard is, more power to you. Uh, so long as you're not uh, you're not deleterious to combat operations, knock yourself out. Uh, so then, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, when he rescinded the direct combat exclusion rule last year, Marine Sergeant Major Michael P. Uh, <laughs> Barrett, the senior enlisted advisor to the Commandant, affirmed, "Our plan is deliberate, measured, and responsible. We will not lower our standards." <laughs> My failed attempt at Quantico and the fact that no woman has yet made it through the infantry officer course should be interpreted as, interpreted as evidence that women can't handle combat environments. To date, 13 female Marines have passed the two-month enlisted infantry training course at Camp Geiger, so they're Geiger Tigers, in North Carolina. While that course is significantly less demanding than the one at Quantico, it is still grueling. Participants must log 85-pound packs on 12-mile treks through the woods, and it establishes the standard for enlisted warfighters. Even more telling, on the front lines, where roles have been blurred, women have performed exceptionally well in traditionally male situations. Consider Sergeant Hester, uh, Leanne Hester, that's Lee Ann Hester, not Leanne, a Kentucky National Guard soldier. Hester was leading a team on a mission outside of Baghdad in March 2005 when her convoy was attacked by insurgents. She orchestrated with a counter, she orchestrated a counter attack with grenades in uh, two or three rounds. The unit killed 27 insurgents, including three taken out by Hester with a rifle 
and not a single, single soldier was lost. Hester became the first woman to receive a silver star since World War II. And actually, uh, the story that's not told there is that uh, the her senior, the this uh, Sergeant Hester's senior, uh, the male, wound up getting a higher award than the silver star. His was upgraded afterwards. And um, that he retrieved her out of out of the Humvee after the uh, ambush started. Hey, you know, get your get your team and let's do this. That said, they performed exquisitely well in eliminating the people who were uh, operating the ambush. To include a specialist, by the way, who was double fisting <laughs> weapons and and charging into uh, the people. He he got I think he got a bronze star. That that's just one of the ways it works in the military. If you do a heroic act, uh, pretty much. And you're next to someone who's a, who's a higher rank than you, and they do a, pretty much the same act that you do. They get a better reward. <laughs> it works that way far too often. It's like, oh, that poor private. He did some heroic shit. Company coin. What? Okay, battalion coin. You earned it. <laughs> so what's held women back in the Marines uh, in the Marine Corps Infantry Officer course? I absolutely agree that we shouldn't reduce qualifications. For Marine infantry officers, mistakes mean risking the lives of troops you are charged to protect. But I believe that I could pass, and that other women could pass, if the standards for men and women were equal from the beginning of their time in, with the Marines. If endurance and strength training started earlier uh, than the current practice for people interested in going into the infantry, and if women were allowed a second try, as men are, Female lieutenants aren't as prepared as male lieutenants for the infantry officer course uh, tests of strength and endurance because they have been trained to lesser standards. This is like saying that uh, infantrymen in the army aren't prepared for ranger school, RASP, or as it used to be called when my brother went through RIP, because, because the, the standards for your average infantryman, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, let me, let me put a spin on this, <laughs> ranger candidates aren't prepared as ordinary infantrymen for the uh, ranger school test because of strength and endurance uh, they've been trained for and encouraged to train to lesser standards just to be in the ordinary infantry. This is what it means to do something above and beyond uh, the, the, the call of duty. To the, the standards that you are trained to meet, that you have to meet, are the minimum that you should be doing. You should, you know, the, the PT that you have to do to maintain the standards just to pass your tests, or even to do reasonably well in them, that's the absolute minimum amount of effort, minimum amount of effort that you need to be putting into it. Uh, don't be running four miles a day, be running eight, be running 12, be running, well, I don't know about 12, but re be running eight or so miles per day. An hour workout, it needs to be more rigorous than what you've been doing. These are things that, when my brother wanted to go to ranger school, he went and, you know, Oddly enough, talk to some people who had been through it, and hey, uh, I know that um, like you, you can't re replicate the whole training for me, and and you can't tell me everything that's going on and whatnot, but at least work with me so that way I can I can train on my own in a meaningful way. So when I go, I'm that much better physically prepared. And he started like a year out. It is grueling training. I I, I don't want to put words in his mouth or misstate what he did, but he started a long while out. This this particular lieutenant knew in 2012 that this was open. She's She's been wanting to do this and wanting to do this, and she's a self-starter, so she, she claims she does all these sports. You could have been training those two years for this particular course, but you didn't, and instead you come out, fail, and whine. The problem is the Marine Corps didn't tell you to do more to train yourself for it, notwithstanding the fact that you, you conceded, you, you argued, explicitly right in the opening paragraph here that people who go through this course are told not to tell other people what it's like. So that way, when people do get there, this isn't what she said, this is just the extension of the argument, the reason that it is this way. So when you do get there, you make, or you, you make it, or, or you, it, it, you're made or, or made or, uh, God, this is not coming the way I wanted to. You, you pass or fail, you succeed or you succeed <laughs> based on what it is that you have on your own done anticipating what that might be like. So yeah, it, that and it's a course that's designed to weed people out. <clears throat> uh, OCS, Officer Candidate School, where all Marine officers start out, is segregated by sex. 
of course, the, the problem there is when you start talking about this, when you want to combine standards, which is, if it's not segregated by sex, that'll also be a complaint. Oh my god, there are men in the, the female barracks. You know, it's, you, you just can't win playing this game. I was in an all-female platoon. We worked with men on few occasions, but never competed with them, for obvious reasons. This was odd for me. That was odd for me. As someone who grew up playing hockey on boys' teams, I was used to facing off with guys. The basic school, where I reported after graduating from uh, college in 2012, has long been co-ed, but physical double standards persist. In the physical fitness test, for example, a male perfect score is achieved by an 18-minute, 3-mile run, 20 pull-ups, and 100 sit-ups in 2 minutes. A female perfect score is a 21-minute, 3-mile run, a 70-second flexed arm hang, and 100 sit-ups in 2 minutes. There was a move to shift from arm hangs to pull-ups for women last year, but 55% of the females failed it. I'm sorry, we're unable to meet the minimum of three, and the plan was put on hold. I understand not wanting to discourage new recruits. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I do a little bit. But dual standards highlight and foster differences in a way that undercuts the goal of integrated military units. Well, it's funny she was talking about the maximum standard as opposed to the perfect score, as opposed to the minimums that uh, more than half of the females going in fail. There is nothing at all that stops you from doing more than what is the maximum on a test. Really, there is. I mean, I'm not saying I'm one of those people to do it, but I do know some of those people, uh, some people who are like that. And they don't walk around and complain when they fail to do something because someone else didn't come by, grab them by the hand and say, hey, you should do a little bit more. When I went through basic, one of my drill sergeants was uh, airborne air assault. She was... Tiny, 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 tiny. Now, if you if you never uh, the air assault course, the the final ruck march is uh, it, it's timed and it, it's not exactly easy to do. And with those short little stubby legs like she had, she had to look like a cartoon character to make that. And never for a moment. And she ran with a she ran with a fast group, uh, but she also had to run a lot to maintain that to maintain that standard. And people who would complain, she's like, you know what? You get to go do PT with me, and I have to do it twice a day to stay at this level of fitness. So I will see you after training's done. Uh, we'll put it. We'll put apart a little bit of special time, uh, a little special love time for you people and me. And she would. And I had a sergeant major who was like this too. She did not let people, particularly females, complain that oh I'm a female and it's difficult. And she didn't. She was also short, and she didn't let short people complain that oh I've got i you know I've got these short stubby legs. Oh really? You know what? Uh, I max the male scale. Her, I max the male scale on the run too, because I'm interested. This is how she made it to be a sergeant major, by the way. I'm interested in in uh, doing the absolute best that I can do, and clearly, you're not. So you know what? Your weekends are canceled. You can come in on Saturday mornings, and uh, you can jog, jog with me. And let me tell you, she could run. I was like, I don't want to be exercising with her. <clears throat> um, but that, that's just running. That's just a level of fitness. It's a different story when you start weighting people down. And then uh, it's, not a, it's a whole different uh, environment. Anyway, women aren't encouraged to, to establish the same mental toughness as men. Rather, they're told that they can't compete. Men, meanwhile, are encouraged to perceive women as weak. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where people get the idea that uh, women aren't as physically strong as men. I, I don't know where that comes from. It's a complete mystery. I noticed that women were rarely chosen by their peers for some of the harder tasks in basic training. Yes, because people want to get shit done. And I'm sorry, when you have an 80-pound tent that needs to be moved from point A to point B, you can, you can put five women on it, or two guys, and have it done. What are you going to choose? You're going to choose the two guys. Especially if you're one of the females who gets to vote, as I've noticed. Yes, men have biological advantages and tests of upper body strength, yes, but women can do pull-ups if given enough time to build up that strength. You had two years before going to this course, all the time in the world to build up all the, the endurance and strength that you required, but the Marine Corps didn't come by and hold your hand and force you to do it, I guess. I did 16 in my last physical test. Good. And I have no illusions that I'm the most qualified female Marine. Recognizing biologically based advantages and disadvantages, and developing training programs that work to balance them are key. So here's what I'm going to end the video with. There is, you know, with, with anything like this where you're doing physical training, 
it's it's not like a linear linear effort results in a linear output. You know, the same amount of effort doesn't result in the same amount of uh, betterment in your improvement in your physical capacities. You get diminishing returns. So your graph will be in well, at, at some point it just plateaus off, but you'll be increasing at a decreasing rate. You'll be gaining more endurance and more strength, but at an increasing rate. And the amount of effort you have to put in for that extra little bit becomes an, an onerous burden on the amount of time that you have available to your life to do things other than just train for that. So yes, they could dramatically, they could double the amount of time that women are forced to be trained every day physically. Of course, people would bitch about that because why are you singling women out? Because they're the ones who aren't meeting the standard. That's why. So she's perfectly correct in saying, same standards, complete, uh, uh, missing the, completely missing the point in saying that what they need to do is to it, it change the way that women are trained. Look, the, the, you get an hour, hour and a half for working out every day. If that's not enough for you, their train, you know, their their goal is to train you to meet minimum standards. Huh? Or hurrah! All right. Beyond that, if you want to succeed or succeed, depending on what you like to do, I don't judge. You have to do that on your own, and it takes a lot of time and effort. And if you can't do that, it's no surprise that you will continually fail out of the hard schools that are designed to weed people out. Cool. Have a good day.